All right, so this is gonna be a video on quadratic functions and applications. What we're gonna be doing in this video is finding the vertex, intercepts, and symmetry axis of a parabola. We're also going to be writing a quadratic equation in vertex form. We're going to be finding the equation of a quadratic function from its graphs, and we're gonna solve some application problems involving quadratic functions and parabolas. Okay, so just as a quick reminder, quadratic functions is a second degree polynomial function. So if you remember, degree just means the highest exponent power. In this case, it's gonna be a whole number, an integer. So if you notice right here, there's a two here. Uh, so a quadratic formula has this kind of format, ax squared plus bx plus c. If you can put it somehow in that type of equation, then you have a quadratic function. a, b, and c are real numbers, and a cannot be zero. Because if a were zero, then the degree would not be two. So that's basically what a quadratic is. It should look very familiar to you. The graph of a quadratic is a smooth, u-shaped curve called a parabola. Make sure you understand that because you're going to see the parabola word be thrown around a lot. The turning point is called the vertex. So when you see that where it turns, that's called the vertex. And it's symmetrical if you split that vertical line where it goes through that vertex. It basically splits it into a uh, symmetrical u or upside down u as well. We're going to show you some examples of that in just a second. By completing the square, any quadratic can go from standard form. So this ABC format is standard form and it can be transformed into vertex form using what's called completing the square. That should be something you've at least heard about because you learn about it in Algebra 1. This being a pre-calc class, it does kind of assume that you've seen that at least before. All right, the vertex, another way of finding the vertex is it's got the coordinates h comma k, where h is equal to this formula right here, negative b over 2a. And if you plug h into the f equation, then you get the k value as well. So we're going to be doing that later to figure out the vertex of a quadratic function. The axis of symmetry is the vertical line x equals h. So once you find h, all you have to do is write x equals h, which again, the h is based on this formula right here, this negative b over 2a. You can find the axis of symmetry from that. If a is positive, then the parabola opens upward. If it's negative, it opens up downward. We're gonna be doing a problem that involves that sort of concept. The graph is wider if a is between negative one and one, okay? And then narrower if it's greater than one. So it just kind of grows a little bit faster. So because of that, it almost looks like it becomes a little thinner, a little more narrow. We're gonna show examples of that. All right, the next thing is the x-intercepts of the graph can be figured out by setting the y equal to zero. So the f of x is equal to zero. That's how you find the zeros of f. If a parabola has two distinct intercepts, the vertex is directly between them because of that symmetry. The y-intercepts is zero comma f of zero. So you can just plug zero in for x and get the y value from that and you'll get the y-intercept. And the last thing, the quadratic formula f attains an extreme value, a min or max at the vertex. Okay, so if it opens upward, then it has a min. If it opens downward, it has a max. So let's look at some examples to kind of solidify all these concepts, because there are a lot of them, but hopefully it makes more sense once we do some examples. So this first one here, it says consider the quadratic function x squared plus 6x minus 7. Find the x-intercepts. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is, I'm actually going to put a little number here. So the first thing we're going to do is find the x-intercepts. The second thing we're going to do is find the coordinates of the vertex. I'm going to put a little two there. Then we're going to find the axis of symmetry. So basically all those things that we just talked about. Then we're going to write the equation in vertex form. Okay, once we have the vertex, it shouldn't be too difficult. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sketch the graph from there. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do, so we'll put a little one here. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to find the x-intercepts. To do that, you have to set the y equal to zero. So instead of f of x equals x squared plus 6x minus 7, we're going to say zero is equal to x squared plus 6x minus 7. And we're basically going to solve this equation right here. Zero is equal to x squared plus 6x minus 7. The easiest way to do this one is just probably to factor it. You could use quadratic formula if you want as well, but this factors nicely, so we're just going to factor it. All right, this is going to factor to x plus 7 and x minus 1. Now from here, what you can do is you can set each individual factor equal to zero. So we're going to set x plus 7 equal to zero and x minus 1 equal to zero. We're going to solve these, subtract 7 on both sides, x is equal to negative 7, add 1 to both sides, x is equal to 1. So there are our x-intercepts, negative 7 and 1. x equals, and I'm going to highlight it because that's the answer. All right, the second thing that it's asking for is the coordinates of the vertex. All right, if you remember the vertex, it's got the coordinates of h comma k, where h is equal to negative b over 2a. So in this case, our h is going to be equal to negative b, where our b is 6, because it's that middle term right here, 6, divided by 2 times a. Well, a is 1. It's just invisible, but it's just 2 times 1. So our h for the vertex is just going to be negative 3. Now we need to figure out the k. Well, the k is equal to f of h. In that case, it's going to be f of negative 3. So that means you need to plug negative 3 into this equation up here. So if you do that, you're going to get 9 minus 18, which is negative 9, minus 7 is negative 16. So the final vertex coordinate 
would be negative 3 comma negative 16. And again, this is where that u turns. We're going to draw a graph of this to kind of make more sense of it. But just for now, just know that's where the u turns. It switches directions. The third thing we're going to find is the axis of symmetry. Now, the axis of symmetry is just x equals whatever the h is. So if remember, axis of symmetry is x equals h. We just went over that a second ago, so hopefully that semi makes sense. It's, it's in the notes above. So it's just going to be x equals negative 3, because h is equal to negative 3. The fourth thing that it's asking for is write an equation in vertex form. Well, we have the vertex right here. So we're actually going to use the vertex to write this in vertex form. So I'm going to use vertex form just to kind of get an idea of what this is going to look like. So it's going to be a times x minus h squared plus k. So we're going to fill in all those values and then we'll have it in vertex form. So f of x is equal to, the first value that we're going to look for is this a. Well, a, if you remember, a is equal to 1. We just figured it out in the uh, second thing we found the vertex. It's that invisible number that's in front of the x squared. In that case, it's just going to be a 1. So a is 1. We're just going to leave it blank. x minus h, well, h is negative 3. We just found that a second ago. So that's just going to be x minus negative 3 squared. Now, the negative negative is just going to be a plus. And then plus k, well, k is negative 16. We just figured that out right here. So your final answer when it's like fully simplified would just be f of x is equal to x plus 3 quantity squared minus 16. And that's the answer for that fourth part. The fifth part is we are going to sketch a graph of all this. Okay. Now what's great about all these things, all these characteristics of the graph is it makes the sketch pretty easy to do. All right. So I'm going to write 5 here. Something like that. Okay. Now this is obviously not going to be to scale because it's just a sketch, but it gives us a, a basic idea. So the negative 7 is the first thing that I'm going to graph here. So that's just going to be negative 7. That's the x-intercept, so I'm just going to put a little dot there. Okay, and there's also going to be one at 1. So we'll put a little dot there as well. Okay, now we know this is going to open upward because the a is 1. That's positive, so it's going to be opening like this. Not like this. It's not going to be opening downward. It's going to be opening like that. Uh, and we know where the vertex is, so I'm actually going to plot that vertex because that's where the turning actually happens. This is not going to be to scale because it's just not going to be, and that's okay. So here's negative 3. Okay, so then there's a point right here. This is where it actually turns. Okay, and if you notice, negative 3 is between negative 7 and 1. So if you averaged negative 7 and 1, the middle would be negative 3, which again is where that symmetry point is supposed to happen anyway, so it's kind of perfect. Uh, and then from here, you can kind of see that it's going to form a U-shape if you connect the dots. So I'm just going to kind of do this. And it's just a sketch, so obviously this is not exact, but it's going to have to do. And there's our sketch. The main thing that I would be looking for, if this was like on a test or on homework or some assignment or something like that, is are the x-intercepts correct? Is the vertex correct? And then is it opening in the correct direction? That's the main thing that any teacher would normally be looking for for a problem like this. So, Anyway, that's number one. Let's go to the next one here. It says sketch a graph, and it's already in vertex form. Well, that's kind of nice, since it's already in vertex form. Now, since it's in vertex form, we can actually just figure out what the vertex, vertex is right away. And the vertex, in this case, the h would be equal to 3, and the k would be equal to 4. So that means that the vertex is going to happen at 3, 4. So again, this is not going to be to scale, nor does it need to be, but 3 comma 4, and we have where it turns. And since the a is less than 0, it's going to be opening downward, so it's going to look something like this when we actually graph it out. But the easiest way to figure out like the next two points is just to make a table. That's kind of what I would do. So we have the x here, and we have the f here. And if you put a 3 in, you get a 4. But let's do values that are kind of close to that 3. So we can plug in like a 2, that's to the left of it. And then let's plug in a 4, that's to the right of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug that into the original equation up here. Because we're trying to figure out the y value here. So if you plug 2 into that, you're going to get negative 1 squared, which is just 1. Negative 2 plus 4, you're just going to get a 2 there. And since it's symmetrical on either side of this, this should also be a 2. But if you want, you could plug that in. You'll see that you get a 2 there anyway. So from here, we're going to put a 2 here and a 4 here. The values for both of these is going to be 2. So we're going to put one here, one here, connect the dots, and we have our sketch. Okay, if you notice, it also kind of shows where the x-intercepts are. I'm not going to worry about solving those for this one, but you can kind of see that it opens downward. There's a vertex of 3, 4. There's those two other points there, and that's what the sketch looks like. All right, let's do the next problem. All right, one of the main reasons why students actually learn about quadratic equations is because they deal with a lot of physics stuff, namely gravity. Gravity is quadratic, well, depending on the model you use, but the model that's generally used in classical Newtonian mechanics is quadratic. So that's why you're going to see a lot of uh, a lot of problems like this. 
Uh, a ball is thrown upward at a, with a velocity of 48 feet per second from the top of the 144 foot building. What is the maximum height? So maximum height on this, you'd think the vertex. Okay, so the ball is going up and then it's going down. Where that turn, that direction changes, that would be the vertex. So that's what we're gonna be finding first is the vertex. Then it says, how long until the ball hits the ground? So if it hits the ground, that means its height is zero. So we're also gonna be solving for the height is equal to zero. So just to kind of clean this up a little bit, the maximum height is the first thing that we're gonna find. And the next thing is how long. So one's a time and the other one's a height. So let's solve this first part here. What is the maximum height? We kind of already said this before. We're gonna figure out what the vertex is. The vertex has an H, which is equal to negative B over 2A, and a K, which is equal to F of H. So let's figure out what H is first. So that's gonna be negative 48 divided by negative 16 times two. So negative B over 2A. Okay, the negative negative is gonna cancel. This is gonna be 24 when you cancel out this two here. The 24, you can divide the top and the bottom by four here, and you're gonna get six over four. You can divide the top and the bottom by two, and you're gonna get three over two as your h. Okay, the k in this case is the function when you actually plug that into it. So if you plug in the 1.5 or three halves into that function there, you are gonna get 180. So the vertex, it's gonna look something like this because it's got a negative a value. That happens at three halves comma 180. Therefore, the maximum height, which is what it's looking for, is 180 feet. So I'm just gonna run 180 feet and then highlight it because that's my answer. Next, it says how long until the ball hits the ground. When it hits the ground, that means the height is equal to zero. That's a major part of this problem is making sure you figure out it's when the h is equal to zero. That's what it's looking for. So that's the ground is zero, zero height. So we're gonna solve this whole thing right here, this quadratic equation right here, we're gonna solve this for the height being equal to zero. Now to do this, I'm actually gonna use quadratic formula because the numbers are kind of a little bit crazy on this and it's just gonna be easier if I do that. Now if you want, you can also simplify this. You can see these, these all have a common factor, but for the purpose of this video, I'm not really gonna do that. I'm just gonna kind of calculate it out. So we have x is equal to negative b, which is negative 48, plus or minus the square root of b squared. b squared is gonna be 2,304 minus 4ac, so it's gonna be four times 144 times negative 16 here. So again, I'm just using quadratic formula. Square root all of that, and then divided by 2a, which is just gonna be negative 16 times two. So I'm gonna throw this whole thing in my calculator, basically, and you end up with two answers. You end up having a 4.854 and a negative 1.854. Okay, you end up with two time values, which only one of these actually makes sense. You cannot have a negative time value so far as we know. So the answer for this one is going to be 4.854 seconds and i did round to three decimal places because really the number is a irrational number that goes on forever but we only need three decimal places for this one and we should be good to go so that's that one all right this next one a quadratic function has a leading coefficient of three okay so that means a is equal to three so that's the first thing i can write down a is equal to three it has zeros of x equals six and x equals negative two that means in its factored form the the, the problem should look like this so let's just say it's going to be f of x is equal to three and it's always x minus the zeros so x minus six and x minus negative two, which is just gonna be x plus two. Now, it's not asking for factored form, but since it gives the zeros, it's easy to just write it in factored form right away. So first thing that I want you to do is check. If you plug six into this, do you get zero? You would get three times zero times eight, which is zero, so that one checks out. If you plug negative two in there, would you get zero? Well, you would get three times negative eight times zero. So yes, that would equal zero as well. So both of these do check out based on the equation that we have so far. Is the leading coefficient three? It is, so we're good to go for the leading coefficient and the zeros. Now what we need to do is just expand this out so it actually looks in standard form. So let's do that now. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is distribute that x minus six to the x plus two, and you should get x squared minus four x minus 12. Okay, now we can distribute the three, and once we do that, we will be in standard form. It's gonna be three x squared minus 12 x minus 36. So that is the standard form, so that's one of the answers right there. So the first thing we're gonna do for vertex form is figure out that h, which is gonna be negative b over two a. So it's gonna be negative of negative 12 over two a, which is gonna be two times three. So this is gonna simplify, the negative negative is gonna to simplify to a positive, 12 over six is gonna be two, so the h is two. Now we need to figure out what the k is, and k is gonna be equal to f of h, which is gonna be equal to f of two. So if you plug two into that original equation, the factored form, actually, or the standard form, it's probably easier to do the factored form here. So you'll get three times negative four times four, which is going to be negative 48 for the k value. So now that we have the h and the k, we can just rewrite it in vertex form, it's gonna be three, parentheses, x minus two, because x minus h, and h is two, squared, 
and then plus the k, which is negative 48, and here's the answer to the vertex form. All right, the last problem is this graph right here. It says the graph of a parabola is shown below. As you can see, it's that U shape that we talked about before. Find an equation for the graph. Okay, so we're gonna use specific values in here, namely the intercepts to basically figure this out, which is gonna be a little bit easier if we use those intercepts. First thing is you notice that it opens downward, so that means that the A has to be negative. Okay, your A has to be negative because it's opening downward, otherwise it wouldn't make much sense. The next thing we're gonna go over is the fact that there is a x-intercept of three and negative four. So we can write that in factored form. So it's gonna be a times x minus three times x minus negative four, which is just gonna be x plus four. So right away we have a function in factored form that we can use to figure out the equation of this graph. And we can keep it in, in factored form if we really want it. It doesn't actually say how it wants the problem, so we can just leave it like this as worst case scenario. So first thing that we're gonna do here is we need to figure out what our a is. So what I'm gonna do is pick an easy value that we know for sure, and that one's probably gonna be right here at zero comma six. So f of zero is equal to six. Well, that means that needs to be equal to a times zero minus three times zero plus four. Okay, well this math comes out pretty nice because it's just gonna be a times negative three times four is negative 12. So right away you can see that our a in this case is gonna be six over negative 12, which is just negative one half. So the final answer for this one, if you, if you wanna just write it in factored form, would be f of x is equal to negative one half times x minus three times x plus four, and that's the final answer. If you notice again, it does not say to put it in standard form, but if I wanted to, I can expand that out and put it in standard form. If it said vertex form, once I have it in standard form, it'd be pretty easy to put that in vertex form as well, but we're not really gonna waste our time doing that because it just doesn't say, so I'm just gonna pick the easiest possible route. Work smarter, not harder on problems like this. So the main thing is the A is negative. As we can see, it's negative one half. I used the X intercepts and the Y intercepts to basically figure out the rest of the equation. So that's a video on quadratic functions and applications. If you notice, we did find the vertex, intercepts, symmetry axis of a parabola. We wrote quadratic functions in vertex form. We found equations of quadratic functions from this graph and we solved application problems involving quadratic functions. If you have any questions about anything in this video, let me know.